Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. Part three, sustainability. How can engineers create sustainable solutions so society can continue to thrive? How is the role of the engineer evolving to meet the challenges of today? The last U.S. Census reveals that our population continues to grow and move towards metropolitan areas. As city centers grow, this places stress on infrastructure and the citizens that inhabit these spaces. People are asking, is this sustainable? But what does that mean? The traditional definition of sustainability is related to the environment, but it's not only limited to that. It includes social and fiscal sustainability. Sustainability for me means that something can last longer than we would have ordinarily expected, and that also means reusing resources. Well, sustainability for LA County is defined as this balance between equity, the economy, and the environment. We need to look at the whole life cycle of an asset so that you know, we are not impacting the environment as well as the environment might impact us. Over the years, sustainability has become a core value of engineering, but today we have to revisit that definition and expand it to meet the challenges of our quickly evolving world. The United Nations projects as population growth continues, inadequate and overburdened infrastructure and services will worsen. This includes water and sanitation systems, roads, bridges, buildings, and even the air we breathe. Residents who are experiencing poverty and who are traditionally marginalized will be impacted first and greatest. Ultimately, this is a global threat and no one is immune. This is why engineers must look at sustainability through lenses of diversity, equity, and inclusion. This board has really taken it upon themselves to look at uh, inclusion, equity, and diversity. And what it's causing us to do is really look at how we utilize our property and assets that the county already has. Instead of having to go out and acquire new things, we can repurpose, reuse, and also be more inclusive of how we integrate the services for the very people that we should be serving. Here at LA Metro, our Chief Sustainability Officer looks at all of the resources that we have, fiscal, environmental, as well as social issues, so that we can be a resilient and sustainable transportation system, serving not only Los Angeles, but the transportation industry in general. The engineers, the public works agencies, the health department, and our elected officials have to come together to think about a more holistic approach to that issue, and that involves some infrastructure improvements, and this is where we get involved. This is McLaren Children's Center in El Monte, California. It has been closed since 2003 and is literally walled off to the community. The population density of this park poor and low income city make it a perfect case study on how both engineers and government can collaborate with the community to improve the health and lives of its citizens. One of my thoughts and ideas was, was to repurpose it, to reinvent it to recreate it into something else, something better, and to hopefully lift up the community there, which is predominantly Latino. Some of the ideas we have, of course, a park space, but also we're looking at it for water infiltration to capture more water and put it into the ground to improve their water, water quality and water supply. Putting a sustainability filter on it, we're developing a plan, but not doing it without having the inclusion and outreach of the community first. Interesting, when you come to the community, a lot of times you just, we in the past would assume the community doesn't want it, doesn't want to be involved, want to be engaged. It's one of the biggest implicit bias we all have to get rid of. People don't care. In fact, they do. And we found, by including the community in the conversation, we're quite often surprised about what they want. So, as far as the programming goes in the future, we could definitely collaborate. Make sure we're letting their voices be heard so they can feel safe and supported in their community. I think that's something we gotta yeah. be intentional about. They were hard meetings because some people were like, why are you opening up a park that maybe would attract homeless people when we don't want that? So it wasn't coming from the top down or from the county, it was coming from the bottom up. So it was organic. And so we had to walk through all of that and talk about it. The community is the force that's helping to drive a lot of this. 
McLaren is a really good case study for us. It's become an opportunity site for the county. I mean, in the past, I mean, the economics of it would probably say, sell it off to a developer, let them build, you know, multi high density housing. But I actually see it in a different way. I, I see that no project should go forward without being integrated into the community's existing infrastructure. They will own that project in the end. They will be the keepers of that project. And that's really in the end what we want. We want the public to feel ownership in what's going on in their community. Currently, out of necessity, makeshift encampments are forming all around the country. Nowhere is this more evident than in Los Angeles County, where there are over 60,000 unsheltered people living. We're the community's builder. We're the community's built environment keeper. We maintain and operate that for the community. And for those that are taxpaying property owners who don't like the idea of us spending that money on them, I think they have to look very quickly at how that unhoused person, an unsheltered person, that condition is affecting their quality of life. And engineers, public works departments, the private industry has an absolute obligation ethically because of what we know and we, how we know what solutions will work to chip in to make a difference about it. The Care First Village in downtown Los Angeles is currently a 232 bed housing facility for people experiencing homelessness. This project's integrated approach to sustainable infrastructure includes not only repurposing the vacant county-owned land originally slated to become a jail, but the structure itself is sustainable. The ADA-compliant residences are all repurposed shipping containers that would normally be discarded or sold for scrap. The foundation includes a methane membrane barrier system to sequester toxic off-gassing that contributes to air pollution. Efficient design reduces energy costs. Site location and the modular design also played roles in this facility's sustainable success story. We used to hire from outside of LA County, uh, primarily outside of LA County, for years and years. Today, we hire locally first and then nationally second. Why locally? Because the local people, local who grew up locally, have a better sense, in my mind, about the communities that they're about to serve. And so that gives them a, heads, a, a head start anyway in understanding this very complicated community that we serve, 4,000 square miles of diversity. <laughs> We've thought about the, the siting of the facility, where it's located, so it's close to transportation. We not only look at how our system connects to those, but also accelerate the ability of the unhoused and the homeless to become part of the society that they might have been maligned. Not because of their design, but because of the situation that they were in. There are wraparound services that are provided at the facility. There is job training at the facility. We don't fit, tackle the problem at 63,000 people at a time. We tackle it one person at a time. Caring, empathy, compassion, these are just a few of the skill sets needed for the engineers of today so they can build and design for increasingly diverse, equitable, and inclusive communities of tomorrow. We have an obligation as scientists, as engineers, as architects, as planners, to know and think about the future for future generations so that what we build today doesn't burden that future generation. We're not just a transportation system. We are a glue to bring all of our people together in ways that we've never imagined. The board physically looks very different. It's all female. You have one African American, you have one Latina. And I think all that helps us to kind of come together and problem solve. Taking a holistic approach to problem solving, infusing principles of diversity, equity, and inclusion is the way forward, both in principle and in the makeup of the problem solvers themselves. The engineer is and will continue to be perfectly positioned to make a world of difference.